Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Skyrim. This idea cannot be verified. Nonetheless, many are drawn to these stones based on the local stories describing them as a source of significant power. The college will continue to research these intriguing objects, and of course any findings will be relayed with all possible haste. Oh, just watching on the middle of a lecture. Okay, thank you, lovey. Here we are once again, back in the uh, Hall of Elements. As you remember last time we left off, we ended up being attacked by a whole bunch of the uh, college <laughs> inhabitants because of the flame cloak incident with Brulina in the Midden. Um, you guys suggested that we could uh, remove the bounty on our head to stop the attacks, but I decided to <coughs> reload the game from the start of the session and do it all again. It only took me about 25 minutes. And I didn't use any flame cloaks at all. So, uh, oops. So, in terms of the quest for Jizargo's experiments, we're back down to the very beginning. But we'll sort that out another time, preferably when Berlina isn't in our presence. <laughs> <coughs> so, yes, we are now back where we left off and ready to speak with the Archmage about what the uh, what you learn here Alga will last told us. Time. Several, if you're talented. It's no secret that the college's reputation in Skyrim is tainted. Yes, yes. Uh, I have some important information for you, uh, Archmage. Really? And what might that be? Uh, well, apparently, we need to find something called the Staff of Magnus. I'm sorry, what? That was my reaction, actually. <laughs> I'd certainly love to have such a powerful staff, but I'm not really sure that any of us need it. I think you might be wrong. I don't mean to uh, tell the Archmage that he's wrong, of course, but uh, you could well be wrong. You see, it's connected with this here orb that we found. And how do you know of this? I spoke with the Alger of Dunlane. Did you really? And he specifically mentioned the Staff of Magnus? Yes. I'm impressed with your initiative. Of course, someone will need to follow up on this. Uh... I suppose you mean me? I certainly do. Since you went so far as to seek out the Augur for advice, I thought you'd be more enthusiastic. What? Uh, well... Something as specific and ancient as the Staff of Magnus. I'm not sure we'd ever find something like that. I seem to recall Miravel mentioning the staff somewhat recently. Why don't you see if she can tell you anything? Okay. I'm quite pleased with your progress, you know. You've certainly proven yourself to be more than a mere apprentice. Well done. This circlet once proved invaluable to me. I hope it can be of use to you now. Why, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank oh my god. <laughs> Oh, but I tell them not to brag to Berlin, I should be jealous. Even giving us uh, a circlet? Let's take a wee peek. Although I do have a hood on, let's see if it's going to prove to be useful, shall we? Circlet. Mage's circlet. Increase your magic by 50 points. Oh, yes indeed. Much better than the hood. Oh. Although it won't keep my head as warm, but never mind. Let's take a wee look, shall we? Um, how do we... I've forgotten how to get back in... Oh, there we go, right click. There we go. Gives me slightly more magicka than the uh, than the hood. And uh, we get to see uh, Elwyn's hair for a change. <laughs> you like it, Berlina, eh? Right, we better go speak with Mirabelle. <coughs> it's getting on, it's actually in time. It's like 1.25am. We should really be getting ourselves to bed very shortly, but... Uh, Oh. Don't like that man. Not in the slightest. Right, yes, and as I played through the second uh, playthrough of the same session, I thought the cleaners had moved this, but it, it made a return somehow. <laughs> I have no idea how, but it did. Right, rather thankfully, Mirabel seems to be in our in our quarters. 
so we can speak with her and then get ourselves off to bed. <laughs> She's probably sleeping herself. We should really not interrupt, but uh, I think she might be upstairs. Here she is. Is she sleeping? Oh no, she she must be a night owl like us. Uh, excuse me, uh, Mirabelle? Please don't bother the Archmage unless it's absolutely necessary. Oh, keep your hair on. If there are any problems, let me know. It's my job to keep things running smoothly. Uh, do you know anything about the Staff of Magnus I was sent here by the Archmage? Well, now that's an odd question. Why in the world would you be asking? Um, as I said, the Archmage said you mentioned it recently. I see. Well, yes, I suppose I did mention it, though I'm not sure what he expects me to tell you. I only brought it to his attention a few months back when the Synod showed up here looking for it. They were apparently under the impression we were keeping it in a closet somewhere. The who, sorry? Uh, Synod? Mages based out of Cyrodiil. They fancy themselves the Imperial Authority on Magic these last few hundred years. My understanding is that all they really do is make noise in an attempt to curry favor from the Emperor. Lots of politics, little magic. I was quite surprised to find them on our doorstep. They seemed amiable enough, but their line of questioning made me... uneasy. It became clear they're trying to hoard powerful artifacts looking to consolidate power. Okay. So does anyone know where the staff is? No one here does. The Synod seemed convinced it was somewhere in Skyrim. They inquired about the ruins of Mizulft, but that's all I remember. It sounded like they were heading there, though they were rather secretive about why. I suppose if you're intent on looking for the staff, there's a chance they might be in Mizulft yet. Just don't expect them to be cooperative. So we need to head to the ruins of Mazolft. Strange name. Let's take a look on our handy map. If I can bring myself to uh, uh, Flaming Hellfire. Okay. <laughs> Just do that. It's probably easier. There we go. It's on the r way to Riften, as was already pointed out to me by some people. Uh, thank you. But we're not going down to Riften. Uh, it's been a change of plan. I'm afraid, but we'll get to that tomorrow morning. For now, it is time for some shut eye. As we remove this from our quest marker. Have you managed to track down the Synod or the Staff of Magnus? Uh, excuse me, love. Did you not just see me leave your presence all but ten seconds ago? I cannot time warp, you know, dear. <laughs> Jesus. Right, time for bed. In the morning, we shall relay our plans. This is not. This is not our room. Where's our room? Here it is. Here it is. Right. Here we shall reconvene in the morning, when we shall relay the plans that will probably take us into uh, the next sort of thirty or forty parts. So uh, join Elwyn in a few hours' time. Okay, it's now morning, we've had our rest, and uh, we're ready to set out on our affairs for the day. Berlina, how are you, dear? Thank you. Thank you. Let's go. This morning we've had ourselves a nice hearty breakfast. I say hearty, hearty-ish. We've had some toasted bread. We've had some, uh, some s thinly sliced salmon. And a little bit of fruit as well. A bit of a continental style type breakfast. Uh, but it was uh, rather pleasant. And it's not blizzarding for a change, which is always a bonus. So, what are we going to do today, and in fact for the next few parts? Well, <coughs> it's been playing on Elwyn's mind for the past sort of couple of days or so since he heard about it. It is here. Azura Star. A powerful artifact indeed for enchantments. He's going to go and get it. So if we bring up our map, whilst we're here, there are a couple of other things. Uh, so it's going to obviously take us all the way down, back into the hold of White, White Run, back past Riverwood, to where we started, and then beyond to here, in Alta's Deep. That's where it is, apparently.
But then whilst we're down here, there's also the issue of being near, well, relatively near Rorik's dead, which is the place where we need to speak with is it Sam regarding that staff when we woke up drunk. And then whilst we're also here, over here, there is another quest regarding Red Eagle's sword, which is probably somewhere around about here. Shalidor's writings, which are somewhere around about here. And then further north, even still, releasing Thorald from Thalmor custody. <coughs> Excuse me. All within a sort of swooping arc on the map. So that is what we're going to do. So it's uh, hopefully a way for us to get rid of a few of these quests whilst we have them. Bring them to a conclusion, hopefully. And it's going to take us to passages new. We're not going to. We're going to avoid, if possible, the main cities. But we're just going to go on a little bit of a a jaunt into the big wide world and see what we can see what we can find really so in our backpacks we have with us every item possible that we're going to sell on the way whether we can sell them at uh, Berners oddments or not matters not because before we even go anywhere near in Elders Deep we're going to head into Whiterun to say hello to see how they've got on since Elwyn left them off with their bound with their bandits all killed and their tree hopefully is going to be blooming now. We're gonna see if the tree is in fact blooming. Since we uh, brought back that sap. Probably pop into uh into Breeze home. See if the you know still in one piece, hasn't burnt to the ground or something. Been plundered by thieves in our absence. And uh Depending on what time we do get there, of course, then we'll, we'll head out towards the Zero Star. So once again, it's uh, it's a long journey between Winterhold and Whiterun. Of course, there's no carriage on this end of the uh, of the route, <laughs> which is rather unfortunate. Something we we'll probably put in the Yarl suggestion box, eh? Can we not uh, apply for uh, a carriage to park outside the gates of? There's no gates, of course. The park outside sort of uh, winter hold to allow us, you know, swift passage to another city. Pull a few strings would be nice. Uh, so uh, yes, it might be a while before Elwyn finds himself back at the comfort of the college to practice his magic, to brew up his potions. He's leaving all that behind him. He's taking a break from magical advancement to uh, get him, well, to get himself into a little bit of mischief, I suppose. See what's out there in, in ruins and other such things. And of course, Brulina as well is eager to, to find a zero star to start with. And after that, it's just a case of uh, enjoying the adventure. No doubt we'll be stopping off in inns here, you know, a couple of inns maybe, in a few settlements. <clears throat> maybe even sleeping it rough if we have to. Some are saying the Sigic monks have been seen in Skyrim. They are an ancient order. I don't think it's for dead. Hmm, it's an amazing how gossip travels so quick in these parts, isn't it? Okay, so whilst we are making our journey back, to White Run, which is probably going to take us a little while, at the very least. Elwyn did have time last night to actually read a book before going to bed. It helped him to uh, helped him to sleep, helped to relax him and uh, calm him down after the day's affairs, the whole nightmare incident with uh, flame cloaks and such. Although it all happened in his mind, of course, it was not reality. Uh, so we're going to read. He's going to relay the book he did read. Ancient Tales of the Dreamer, Part One: The Ransom of Zarek, by Marabasul. A story about how a boy escapes his kidnappers. Jalimil stood in her garden and read the letter her servant had brought to her bouquet of joss roses in her hand fell to the ground. For a moment it was as if all birds had ceased to sing and a cloud had passed over the sky. 
Her carefully cultivated and structured haven seemed to flood over with darkness. We have thy son, it, it read. We will be in touch with thee shortly with our ransom demands. Zarek had never made it as far as Akgun after all. One of the brigands on the road, orcs probably, or a cursed Dunmer, must have seen his well-appointed carriage and taken him hostage. Jalimul clutched at a post for support, wondering if her boy had been hurt. He was but a student, not the sort to fight against well-armed men, but had they beaten him? It was more than a mother's heart could bear to imagine. Don't tell me they sent the ransom note so quickly, called a familiar voice. And a familiar face appeared through the hedge. It was Zarek. Jalamil hurried to embrace her boy, tears running down her face. What happened? she cried. I thought thou had be kidnapped. I was, said Zarek. Three huge soaring nords attacked by carriage on the Frimvorn Pass. Brothers, as I learned, named Mathais, Ulin, and Coog. Thou should have seen these men, mother. Each one of them would have had trouble fitting through the front door, I can tell thee. What happened? Jalamil repeated. Were thou rescued? I thought about waiting for that. But I knew they'd send off a ransom note, and I know how thou dost worry. So I remembered what my mentor at Akgun always said about remaining calm, observing thy surroundings, and looking for thy opponent's weakness. Zarek grinned. It took a while, though, because these fellows were truly monsters, and then, when I listened to them bragging to one another, I realised that vanity was their weakness. thou do? Ah, well, they had me chained at their camp in the woods not far from Kale, on a high knoll overlooking a wide river. I heard one of them, Coog, telling the others that it would take the better part of an hour to swim across the river and back. They were nodding in agreement when I spoke up. I could swim that river and back in thirty minutes, I said. Impossible, said Coog. I can swim faster than a little whelp like thee. So it was agreed that we would dive off the cliff, swim to the centre island and return. As we went to our respective rocks, Coog took it upon himself to lecture me about all the fine points of swimming. The importance of synchronised movements of the arms and legs for maximum speed. How essential it was to breathe after only the third or fourth stroke, not too often to slow thyself down, but not too often to lose one's air. I nodded and agreed to all his fine points. Then, we dove off the cliffs. I made it to the island and back in a little over an hour, but Coog never returned. He had dashed his brains at the rocks at the base of the cliff. I had noticed the telltale undulations of underwater rocks and had taken to diving on the rock on the right. But thou returned? asked Jalamilsus, astounded. Was that not when thou escaped? It was too risky to escape then, said Zarek. They could have easily caught me again, and I wasn't keen to be blamed for Korg's disappearance. I said I did not know what happened to him, and after some searching they decided he had forgotten about the race and had swum ashore to hunt for food. They could not see how I could have had anything to do with his disappearance, as fully visible as I was throughout my swim. The two brothers began making camp along the rocky cliff edge, picking an ideal location so that I would not be able to escape. 
One of the brothers, Matthias, began commenting on the quality of the soil and the gradual incline of the rock that circled around the bay below. Ideal, he said, for a foot race. I expressed my ignorance of the sport, and he was keen to give me details of the proper technique for running a race. He made absurd faces, showing how one must breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, how to bend one's knee to the proper angle on the rise, the importance of sure foot placement. Most important, he explained, was that the runner keep an aggressive but not too strenuous pace if one intends to win. It is fine to run in second place through the race, he said, provided one has the willpower and strength to pull out in the end. I was an enthusiastic student and Matthias decided that we ought to run a quick race around the edge of the bay before night fell. Ulin told us to bring back some firewood when we came back. We began at once down the path, skirting the cliff below. I followed his advice about breath, gait and foot placement, but I ran with all my power right from the start. Despite his much longer legs, I was a few paces ahead as we wound the first corner. With his eyes on my back, Matthias did not see the gape in the rock that I had jumped over. He plummeted over the cliff before he had any chance to cry out. I spent a few minutes gathering some twigs before I returned to Ulin at camp. Now thou was just showing off, frowned J Jalamil. Surely that would have been a good time to escape. Thou mightst think so, agreed Zarek, but thou had to see the topography. A few large trees, and then nothing but shrubs. Ulin would have noticed my absence and caught up with me in no time, and I would have had a hard time explaining the face's absence. However, the brief forage around the area allowed me to observe some of the trees up close, and I could formulate my final plan. When I got back to camp with a few twigs, I told Ulin that Matthias was slow coming along, dragging a large dead tree behind him. Ulin scoffed at his brother's strength, saying it would take him time to pull up a live tree by the roots and drop it on the bonfire. I expressed reasonable doubt. I'll show thee, he said, ripping up a ten foot tall specimen effortlessly. But that's scarcely a sapling, I objected. I thought thou could rip up a tree. His eyes followed mine to a magnificent, heavy looking one at the edge of the clearing. Ulin grabbed it and began to shake it with a tremendous force to loosen its roots from the dirt. With that, he loosened the hive from the uppermost branches, dropping it down onto his head. That was when I made my escape, Mother, said Zarek in conclusion showing a little schoolboy pride. While Matthias and Coog were at the base of the cliff, and Ulin was flailing about engulfed by a swarm, Jalamil embraced her son once again. <laughs>